Hi, we're going to be solving Griffith's quantum mechanics problem 1.3. So this problem, what it says, what it really just does is it gives us this row of x, which is a function of x, which is equal to some constant a times e to the negative lambda times x minus a squared, right? So all this is, we're, let's go through each one of these, right? So we have a row of x, and so our row is just our probability distribution, right? This a is our is a constant. It's co what's called our normalization constant, and this e negative to the negative lambda x minus a squared. This is the actual distribution, right? So whenever we draw this out, we're gonna see that it's gonna look something like this. If you've ever taken a statistics course, it looks like that. I apologize at uh, how poorly drawn it is, but that's around what it's gonna look like. However, because this is a minus a term, this is not zero, this is gonna be our a. And it should be at the middle, even though uh, it doesn't look like it. So now our first question is, we're gonna have to try to find what this a is. This a is our normalization constant. What do we mean by normalization? Well, because this is our probability distribution, that means that the sum of all the probabilities has to be equal to 100%. So 100%, right, is equal to 1. Basic math, common math, right? So now, if this is a distribution, I apologize, if this is a distribution, that means that, and they all have to add up to 1, but this is a continuous distribution, it means that we're going to have to integrate to find all of this is equal to 1. Now, if we write that into our math terms, right, 1 is equal to the integral, negative infinity to infinity, a e negative lambda x minus a squared dx. Now, all we have to do is solve for a. However, this class of integral is a very specific one, and it's appropriately named the Gaussian integral because this is a Gaussian distribution. I'm not going to explain in this video how to solve it, but I will make another video on how to easily solve any type of Gaussian distribution, which is going to be pretty handy for this course, for this book. So we're going to keep going, right? But we can't just solve this straight up. So what we have to do, u substitution. Our u is going to be x minus a, and then we find the derivative, du is equal to dx. Pretty straightforward. Now what we're going to do is we're going to keep going. We're going to take out the a because a is a normalization constant and the key word here is constant and because it's a constant we can just take it out of the integral from negative infinity to infinity of e to negative lambda u squared du now this integral this is going to be magic but it's given by pi over lambda so what does this mean that we have 1 is equal to a square root of pi over lambda, which means that our a is going to be equal to the square root of lambda over pi. And this is our normalization constant. This is what we multiply the original probability distribution to get 1, 100%, to basically make it so it makes sense. Now, we're going to go on to the next part of the problem, part B. B is pretty simple. It's asking us to find these three values. Now, what are these values? Whenever you have these brackets, that means that we have the expectation value. So the expectation value is just the actual value times the probability that it's going to happen. So that's all we really have to do. So in this case, we have to take what's inside the brackets, which is x, and we're going to have to multiply it by the value, like its probability. So if we write this in math, pretty straightforward as well. Again, we're going to do expectation value of x is equal to the integral from negative infinity to infinity of x rho x dx. It's pretty straightforward, right? So we're going to go back in. We're going to take out our a. We're going to put it in here first. Lambda over pi. 
integral negative infinity to infinity of x e negative lambda x minus a squared dx. And again, to solve this integral, we're going to have to do u substitution, right? So we're going to do u is equal to x minus a. However, over here we have an x, so we have to figure out what this x is. So we're not just going to do a derivative, we're also going to do x is equal to u plus a. Now we're going to do our derivative, du is equal to dx, again, pretty straightforward, and we're going to continue with this integral. a integral negative infinity to infinity, um, and now we're going to do parentheses, and over here, u plus a, u plus a, e negative lambda u squared du. This splits, so then we end up with, I apologize if it's a little hard to see, but I promise in the future I will get a better setup. Uh, u e negative da, da, u squared du plus, again our a, another integral, negative infinity to infinity, a e negative lambda u squared du, right? Now, we're going to do some quick analysis, and this is going to be very useful later on. Over here, we have a function that's even. What do I mean by even? So if you remember, you might remember even functions. Even functions. are functions that if you have f of negative x, that's the same of f of x. And odd functions are such that f of negative x is the same as negative f of x. So what does this mean? This means this, an even function just basically means that, let's say you start at zero. This f is gonna be the same value, whether this is a positive one or a negative one. However, an odd function is the opposite. If you have a positive one over here, that's going to be the same as having negative one, but then the value is going to be negative. That's all it's really saying. That's all these even and odd functions are saying. So the best known even function is our cosine. And if we draw it, it looks kind of like this. Uh, I apologize. Like that. And the best known odd function is our sine, which, oh, this is going to be negative, my bad. Da -da -da. It looks something like this. So if you notice over here, uh, this is, these two are complete opposites on uh, across the x-axis, and these two are exactly the same across the y-axis. So that's even an odd function really quick, just as a reminder. So through quick analysis, we can see that because this is a u squared, this section is actually going to be an even function. However, this is going to be an odd function. So if you remember elementary arithmetic, odd times even is an odd. So what does this become? This entire thing is an odd function. And because of that exact same property that an odd function is negative when the x is negative. If you see right here, imagine this is split from zero to infinity, that's gonna be the exact same, but the opposite from zero to negative infinity. When you add both of those together, they cancel out. So whenever you integrate an odd function from negative infinity to infinity, this becomes zero. So all we have to really focus on is this. And if we take out the a, we're gonna get a square root lambda over pi, negative infinity to infinity of e to the negative lambda u squared du, which is, again, magic, pi over lambda. So then our expectation value of x is just going to be a, which makes sense because if we look back at our original distribution, it would make sense because as uh, this distribution is... is uh, mirrored, we would really expect that 
X is most probably going to be here. Any value over here is going to be counteracted by a value proportionally on the other side. So we're going to end up straight in the middle. That makes a lot of sense. So now let's go and check our next one. Over here, we're doing the expectation value of X squared. So we're going to do it similarly. We're going to solve that similarly. X squared which is gonna be equal to the integral from negative infinity to infinity of x squared rho x dx, right? So now the only problem is that now we have an x squared. Since we already know that we're gonna do a u substitution, we, can, we might as well just start doing that. So if we have u is equal to x minus a and x is equal to u plus a, that means that x squared is gonna be just expanding this, right? u squared plus 2au plus a squared. All right. And again, du is equal to dx. Uh, I know it might be a little repetitive, but better safe than sorry. Now, we're going to go and we're going to solve. We're going to start putting stuff in. It's going to be a little bit faster, a little bit more like magic. Pi, lambda over pi, integral from negative infinity to infinity of u squared plus 2ua plus a squared e negative lambda u squared du. All right, so we don't even have to like really expand this all out because it's very obvious from here. We can see that this part is going to end up being zero, right? This part is going to end up coming out. Why? Because, again, we have exactly mirrored to this problem where there is an A and just this times this, and it just came out, right? The A just came out by itself. So if we do the exact same thing, we know that this is just going to be A squared. So then all that's left is this integral, U squared E negative lambda u squared du plus a squared, all right? This integral, again, another Gaussian integral. I'm going to do another video on how to solve these Gaussian integrals uh, very easily. But for now, we're going to have to use magic. I'm going to solve this like if it was magic. This is the square root of pi over 2 lambda square root of lambda. Now we can see that this cancels out with this, and this cancels out with this. So we end up 1 over 2 lambda plus a squared. This is going to be our expectation value of x squared. All right. Now we're going to have to find sigma. What's sigma? Sigma, if you've ever taken a... a statistics class is just standard deviation. So our standard deviation is given by this formula. Uh, squared minus. All right. So if we plug this in, we're going to get 1 over 2 lambda plus a squared minus a squared. So then our lambda squared, or our sigma squared is going to be 1 over 2 lambda, which means that our standard deviation is going to be equal 1 over 2 lambda. That was pretty simple. And for the last one, it asked to sketch the graph, but it seems that we've already sketched the graph over here. Pretty simple. However, it is noteworthy that we're going to have to do, we're going to have to label the top over here. This is just our A. And that's it. That's all you really have to do. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video. I'm going to keep making more quantum mechanics. I apologize that this is already 15 minutes long. I know that this might be, you know, a lot considering you're just doing your homework, but uh, I really want to understand. I want people to understand because it took me a lot longer to understand this stuff than it should have. Uh, so if you want to see more videos, just, you know, uh, let me know. I will pretty much only be doing starred problems. However, if there is a problem that you 
would like to see that's not a start problem, please let me know and I will do my best. I will, be keep, I will keep doing these problems as much as I can. I've already solved a very, very large number of the first three chapters and I continue to keep going until I finish the entire book. So please let me know what, what kind of content you would like to see.